Hey there and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to show you a very simple way how you can paint distant mountains. So then if you paint, for example, a mountain landscape, you have a variety between mountains that are far away and maybe like mountains or something else that is in front of you that is more in contrast and has more of hard edges. So for this, I'm just going to paint a similar painting that I did last time so if you haven't watched my video yet you can go back here's the link you can check it out you can also find the link in the description box down below but basically what you want to do is for blurry outlines we always want to paint wet into wet i'm going to use my my brush and just apply clean water all over my paper so i just this is my work area just so i have a little less space to paint on you can use a flat or a round brush, whatever works best for you. Just the bigger the brush, the quicker it is. So I'm making sure everything is evenly applied. You don't have any pools of water. Like so. And then I'm going to paint the back, back side, the, the background. So this will be the sky that has a nice glow um, in the back. So we have a sunny sky, a blue sunny sky. So I will start with Naples yellow. I like this color because it's just, it's a very sunny color and it's not just like yellow or ochre or something like that. So here I'm adding this right to this area. Starting at the bottom, so this is the sunny side, the sunny part of the sky. So very, very light value. And then maybe even a little more, just, just in case. A little bit more here. And then on top, I will add cobalt blue. We can also just use any other blue you have. It's just for practice and warm up, so don't stress about this too much. So I'm just blending this downwards. Again, I'm using here, um, it's Sandus Water for 100% cotton paper. I just love, uh, I just love painting on cotton paper because some it's just so much more effortless to paint on it and you can achieve so many beautiful results that you can't achieve when you paint with like cotton uh, with wood put wood, wood pulp paper so making sure everything is evenly applied now for distance for distant mountains again we paint wet into wet and the goal is to really pay attention to how dry or how wet the paper is, how much pigment you have on your brush and really balance this out. So if you have a lot of um, water and you add just a little bit of pigment, it will be very washed out. And the more pigment you use and the dry the paper, the more control you have and the more contrast you will get. And it's not just like fading out. So let's see, I will start with, let's say, Cuba Blue again, just for exercise. And it's a very light value relatively maybe add a little bit more water just to make it even lighter so here for example slightly lighter and then i just remove a little bit of my the moisture from my brush and let's uh, say i will add a mountain here so you can barely see even what it, there's a mountain so i just have a little bit of pigment and it's just very blurred out so you can barely see that there is a mountain now, if I increase the pigment ratio, so now it's a little bit darker. Again, I make sure I remove excess moisture. And let's say I add another here. And now my brush just has pigment, but So my brush has pigment, but it's still a little bit drier than the paper. 
so it's actually like balance each other out so now i'm just dabbing on my brush onto my wet paper and you can see how fuzzy everything looks right so it's very blurred out and it might still move so make sure you pay attention to that so just let it be also don't overdo it so like so for example so this is the next mountain And again, I'm increasing the amount of um, pigment. So again, I'm using cobalt blue. Maybe you can even mix in a little bit of, if you have yellow or yellow ochre or raw sienna or anything like that, you can use that. So let's, let me add a little bit of this yellow ochre to make it a little bit like a, a warmish blue. So it's more like a, something like a, like a green blue muted and now I can add another another row of mountains again I only have pigment my, my paper is still pretty like it's still glossy a little bit but it's rather on the damp side so now I'm using a brush that is a little bit drier still but has pigment on it so concentrated mix of pigment and now I just want to add the pigment on top. Again, I'm starting here, somewhere, I don't know, here, for example, starts is my um, mountain. Again, you can see that it's still blurry. It's a little bit darker. And I'm just making sure that if you have a reference image, you can focus on where are the lighter areas, where are the darker areas. So you have some texture. So here, for example, I'm just dabbing on the paint and look at some of the um, reflection or reflections like where they like the areas where are the darker areas how is the pattern of the uh, mountain but again my paper is still damp and my brush has just enough pigment and it still has a little bit of moisture but not so much moisture that it just floats into my paper and again like so maybe here's another mountain and you can also play around with again where's the where are my lighter and darker areas so let's say this is everything's even I have a little bit of uh, lighter areas here and there but then I'm just increasing just a little bit of my pigment ratio so I have again my blue and my yellow ochre and I'm, let's say I want to make this side darker. So I'm just reapplying the pigment. So this will be lighter because this is some light, like lighter area in my mountain. And maybe here is a, is a darker area around this area. It's a little darker and then it fades out. And maybe another is here. And again, you want to use cotton paper for that and really pay attention to how much water there is on your paper and your brush because some techniques just won't work on wood pulled paper and you will be wondering why is it not working so here i can add another mountain by shaping the shadows shadow part here again i'm just shaping this area and my, my reference image there's a little bit like trees in between so I don't see what's happening there I'm just imagining so you can see that now it's a little bit structured and now it up close it looks like um, might look like a, a little bit weird but the, the goal is to capture the essence like the texture the lighter dark areas and not be super super into all the details and just having fun like with the less you worry the le the more you have fun so here i'm just reapplying a little bit of pigments just make sure that when you don't want to add any additional water otherwise it will just be it will just push away the pigments and you will create cauliflower effects so here i'm just reapplying some pigment to my damp paper let's see so this is so let's say this is mountain is in the back and this is a little bit closer. And the reason why I use a little bit of yellow ochre is because 
the closer the mountain gets to the viewer, the the warmer they look. So here, for example, we have still trees and stuff were, uh, growing. And the closer they get, the warmer they look. Because the further, the more um, it's on the cooler side. Because there's like this blue sky. It just makes everything look more bluish. Okay, I think that's enough of messing around with my um, mountain here. Okay, so let's say this is our mountain in the back. And then let's say here's another mountain that's a little bit closer. So let's say we are in the air or something. I'm just making this a little bit softer. All right, so let's say now we are a little bit closer. So now we want to make it even, even more saturated. So again, I'm using this cobalt blue. You can also use ultramarine, works as well. And then I'm using a little bit, let's add a little bit of green. Why not? Oh, this is a little bit too wide right now. Okay, I get, um, go back and add my yellow ochre. A little bit of water, so it's a little bit more liquidy, a little bit of Naples yellow. Now it's a little bit on the warmer side again. So here it's, you can see that it's, it's bluish. Now it's more greenish. And now what I will do is I will add another row here. Maybe add a little bit more blue. I feel like it's a little bit too greenish. So it's a little bit more, still a little bit cool. Yeah, it's much better like so and now here it's a little bit already very damp so we won't have any of those beautiful transitions but i can just reapply some of this paint like just dab 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 like so So now you can see that the closer it gets, the more saturated the color becomes and warmer. And it's also, it's more in focus. So here we have a very blurry, then it becomes a little bit more, um, you can see it a little bit better. This is, gets a little bit more visible. And then you have these here, for example, these trees that are closer that you can already see a little bit better. And I will add a little bit of um, indigo you can also use like paint gray or anything like that, just, just to make the color a little bit um, darker. And you can add, for example, here some, these are some trees or something else that is a little bit closer. I'm just dabbing on my paint just very loosely, like so. A little bit of green, just so it's a little bit the same color. And again, don't worry about like, sometimes you focus so much on making it um, like super, super realistic or super, super detailed, but watercolor is a loose medium and just really allow yourself to play with that. So here, maybe add a little bit of, um, just a little bit of yellow ochre. So we have a little bit of this warmish green looking through can even lift some paint, lift off some paint so it'd be have a little bit of reflection going on. So I'm using clean, relatively clean brush. And for example, we can add some reflections here, just a little bit. Maybe even blend something out just a little bit. Just very, very loosely. And then let's say we have, this is further away and now this is more like closer to the viewer. So what I can, what I can do is, let's say I will add a tree here. So it's still relatively warm on the warmer side. I'm using yellow ochre, maybe a little bit of indigo blue just to make it 
darker. So I have a, like a whole mess of different colors. That's the fun part. Now this is still relatively wet. So if you touch the paper and it's cool, then it's still drying. So don't touch that. Um, you want to wait for it, but let's say it's already dry. Let's, we can also reapply another darker, let's say here would be another row of green trees. Okay, as long as you don't reapply like water and only add pigment and like very, very creamy consistency of paint, then you're still on the safer side and you don't create any like cauliflower effects. Now you can see the edges are still fuzzy because the paint is um, it's relatively like the, the paper is still damp. So the edges are a little bit fuzzy. Once the paper is completely dry, you will notice that you will get rather those um, crisp outlines. So I'm just dabbing on those little trees in front. You can even lift some off here. Just to add some reflections here and there. So I'm using a dry brush, oh, like a damp brush rather, and lift some of this paint here. If you paint, for example, first with a, ye uh, with a yellowish green, let's say I have like yellow ochre, this would look through and also look very beautiful. All right. Now let's say let let it let let me dry this quickly and then we can re-add some crisper outline so you actually get to see this um, contrast between um, these blurry mountains and the crisp outlines from those trees that are closer to the viewer. Now once everything is dry, everything that now that we add the paint on top, everything will have crisp outlines. So. In this case, I'll just use some leftover paint that I have here, some green, some indigo. And then if you now go in with a very concentrated solution, so here, for example, it's a very dark green color now. You can see it's very dark compared to all these different colors. Now, if we go in and paint the trees, in comparison, we have crisp outlines. So let me be at here. I like to place it somewhere in the rule of third. So let's say here's another tree. It's a little bit closer. I'm just dabbing this on. And here's another tree. So I can see all these little details much more like better. Everything is crisp. All these little lines are crisp and have a contrast between these blurry lines and the thick, um, <laughs> the crisp lines. Here, maybe you can add on this side. Maybe here one. Just dabbing this on here. And then here on this side. Maybe even one that goes a little bit up here. And then there's another here on this side. So again, if you paint trees, don't make them look like stand in one row. Change up the height. Otherwise it will just look very unnatural. And even my lines here when I paint this, these trees are very loose and rather messy because I just want to capture again the essence. And okay, these are trees, this is how it looks. 
and yeah this is how it looks it's a very quick sketch it took me like 20 minutes to just practice that and this is the whole point like sometimes we procrastinate on painting and we feel like we want to like we need inspiration we need the perfect time the perfect amount of time like really really um like something that's super i don't know just wait for this magic moment where everything's just perfectly aligned for you to paint but it can be simple as just 20 minutes where you just sit down and paint a simple painting where you can just put some paint onto paper uh, practice different techniques really pay attention to okay how does my paper look when it's wet when it's damp dry what happens when i use this amount of water on my brush or this amount of paint on my brush just little things like that you don't have to paint a whole huge painting every time you sit down it can be just elements like here for example i showed you just a few simple elements i just painted one row at a time still on wet paper and then added some details to the painting at the end so don't feel like you have to sit down for ages or paint a huge painting um, select one little area and practice that because most likely when you first try it out it won't be it won't work pro uh, immediately but then you just need to practice again and it's all about practicing and enjoying the process trusting the process because no one just fell down the sky with like super skills and super talent or something everyone who makes it look easy they put in their time already so that they already spend the time practicing and you only see like the end result of all the time and patience so if you struggle with procrastination and things like that then my next video will be perfect for you because sometimes you wait for this perfect time and and we get to our emotions kind of lead our doing but sometimes you just need to do things and waiting for inspiration might hold you back so i really hope my video will help you with that so this is the final result very quick easy like it's for 25 minutes and my, i mean relatively easy because i only focus on again how much is how wet is my paper how dry is my paper how wet is my brush how dry is my brush how much pigment do i have and really place them one by one and you have a painting like even if it looks complicated or very advanced even that like everything lies on the foundation and the foundation is how to control paint and water um, and using your supplies there's no like magic um, something that you need to like I don't know only the mo most advanced people know they still use the same foundational skills that as a beginner you also learn so just be patient be kind to yourself practice uh, take a little bit of time whenever you have time be committed dedicate some time to it and you will feel so much better like i feel um so much more happy that i sat down and showed you this process and um just walk you through and put some paint to paper it doesn't matter how it looks at the end the most important is how you feel at the end like that you're proud of yourself that you took the time to paint that you practice that you made a step further in your uh, artist life and yeah you just had a good time and could focus on something um, and be focused on that instead of being cluttered and all over the place and stressed so i really hope you will take the time if you again have problems with procrastination then i can't wait for you to see the next video and i really hope it will be helpful to you so thank you so much for watching have a wonderful day and i'll see you in my next video bye